Hey guys, we're here today at Hard Racing working on our Project Grom bike and this time we are doing the Starlane Digi Gear gear indicator. And uh, this one's got kind of a neat little feature. Besides uh, telling you which gear you're in, it also has a shift light, programmable shift light. So you can set it for whatever RPMs you want. It'll start flashing when you get near it. And uh, it's kind of cool. So, if you know, if you want to know what gear you're in, obviously the, the bike only has four gears, but sometimes, you know, you're not sure second or third, you pull up to a stoplight or whatever, you just want to make sure you're in first, whatever the case is. It is a handy little device. Some guys don't really care, but almost every bike these days from the factory comes with a gear indicator on them. So there's a reason for it. Most people, I guess, prefer it. Otherwise, the manufacturers wouldn't spend the money to put it on there. So you get the gear indicator and you get the shift light, fully programmable. It's a little under 100 bucks, so it's not bad. Um, it is not plug and play as it stands. Now we did get sent from Starling a test harness that we're going to try out today. If it works fine, then they'll build us a whole bunch more. Plug and play harness plugs into the bottom of the end gear, plugs into your dash, and then you have. Uh, the white wire here that's actually your programmable wire and you wind up touching that with the ground to program the end gear on what you want your RPM rev limiter to be for your shift light and how many gears you have because this thing is universal to work on anything with a motor from two gears all the way up to nine I believe so it is something you could always use on anything else in the future it doesn't have to be on a motorcycle it could be on a shifter cart a car or anything anything with motor and gears so it's the end gear sold by itself you can get the optional harness it's all on our website obviously uh, we are the guinea pig so we're gonna try this out make sure it works and give them the go-ahead to start making them but literally if you get the harness you just plug it into the the stock dash plug it in the harness of your OEM and then that plugs directly into the gear indicator and then this again is just your program wire and all you're doing is you'll read the directions and you touch the ground and basically follow directions and that's going to be how you program your your uh, shift light and your how many gears you have so next we'll do the installation all right so the installation is pretty straightforward and easy you literally uh, all you have to do is remove your headlight um, or in our case here, remove our top headlight since we got the double row. So that took all of about 15 seconds to uh, unscrew both sides and just drop the, the top headlight out of the way. If you have a stock headlight, it'll take a little bit longer for the extra two bolts on each side. But you just get out of your way so you can access underneath here the OEM plug for your dash. So I'll get here real quick and see if I can show you this under here is where the harness comes in and there's this rubber boot right there so you want to peel back the rubber boot from the stock gauge and then once you get that peeled back you press the little release button on the plug and it pops out and that's it that's all you do you take that loose and now you're going to plug the if you got the plug and play harness which I'm pretty sure you will unless you want to guess and try to splice these wires just to save a little bit of money which would be crazy but some guys might do it so now you're going to take your Starlane wire harness plug it into there the other end will plug back up into your dash and your third plug will plug into the Starlane. Now if you're really worried, if you drive a lot in the rain, or you're really really worried about getting anything in there, you would probably want to take the boot off of the harness here, put it on here, so that it goes back up inside your dash. You don't have to, I'm not worried about it because we don't drive a lot in torrential downpour and even if you do, it would take a lot for water to get thrusted up into there or drip around and get shoved back up in there. I'm not too worried about it. 
it's pretty well protected this is obviously nice to have but I'm not too worried about it. if I can do it later on I might but for now I'm not gonna worry about it all right so we plugged it into the bottom of the dash and then we plug the other part into the wire harness and that just leaves this last piece here and you just plug that into there here it click and that's it now you just got to pick where you want to mount it get on the side probably that makes the most sense and then you just program it so we'll do that next all right so we're all done wiring it up and we've programmed it for four gears and we set the shift light what did we set it at uh, about eight grand so it kicks on right before rev limiter and now I'll show you how it works going uh, 50 miles an hour on a race stand so I'm going to show you the rev uh, shift light in first gear. camera doesn't really show it as bright as it really is but that blue LED light it definitely will catch your eye so definitely an extra little bonus uh, to having a shift indicator is also having a shift uh, light and uh, that way you, just in case you know you're really flying through the gears if you've ever used one it's a really handy device so I'll show you how it shifts in the gears So very simple to easy to install, you get the wire harness as an option and then it becomes plug and play. Without it you're going to be tapping wires. So definitely worth a little bit extra money, get the wire harness that's plug and play, literally clicks into the back of the dash, clicks into your harness and the third plug clicks into this. You can put this on either side, you can mount it down here, you can mount it up here, comes with super high uh, double-sided to 3M industrial tape so or you could use velcro if you're really uh, wanting to move it around or whatever but it's uh, water resistant you know obviously if it torrentially downpours and sits out in the rain for 10 hours it may have an issue but it is made to get wet on occasion you know while you're driving but um, they're not going to guarantee it against a torrential downpour so if you leave your bike outside which you probably don't really want to do anyways but if you did it may be a good idea to put a little baggie over it if you're worried about it but uh, they know it's gonna get wet so they do make it water resistant but it's not made to go underwater so if it's gonna be soaked on for eight hours straight you might want to put a little baggie on it alright so the last thing to go over is the programming so as I uh, explained earlier it comes with that little white wire and that's how you program the unit the directions have in the sequence to do the rev limiter first or the shift light I should say for your rev limit and then do the gears but we found it works better to do the other way 
basically you take the white wire and you hold it to the ground for 20 seconds and that light goes to P you let go of the wire and it starts flashing you touch the wire one two three four and it's gonna show the number four and you don't do anything for a second then it's gonna stop flashing and switch to number one and it's gonna be basically asking you please put it in first gear and rev it up a little bit you don't have to drive around you can do it on a race stand and you don't have to go very high just like maybe second uh, two grand 2500 then it's gonna switch to second and it's basically asking you please switch to second so you switch the gears to second same thing two grand and it's while it's doing this it's learning it's figuring out what speed and what rpm your bike is to tell itself what gear you're in next it's going to go to third same thing shift into third just go up to about two grand 2500 then it's going to go to fourth and then you move to fourth as well then it's going to stop flashing and that means it's learned your bike it's learned the ratios it's learned rpm to speed everything's good then you can just shift through the gears and watch it change then after you've done that you program your shift light at your rev limit take the white wire hold it to a ground which I was just using the fork cap top it's easy to get ground right there and hold it there for 10 seconds and then the lights gonna turn to an R and then you let go and it's gonna flash now you rev the bike up to wherever you want the shift light to kick on eight grand eighty five hundred wherever you want if you've done a rev extend nine grand if you want it a little bit beforehand it's whatever you want you rev it up to there hold it for two seconds and it needs to be steady so in order to make it steady it's best to have it in gear because without gear the throttles are just up and down up and down no matter how hard you hold the throttle it's still gonna fluctuate so it's better to put it in gear on a race stand and you go all the way up to there wherever you want and then hold it for two seconds and then hit the kill switch don't turn it off just hit the kill switch that'll go to zero and that's it now it is learned where you want your shift light to kick on and you can change it anytime you want you can wipe it out and turn it off whatever you want to do it's totally programmable after that as well but it, it is literally that easy so all you're doing is telling it you have four gears and telling it how each gear works as you just cycle through them and then setting your rev limit for your shift light you don't have to do that that's optional but you do have to tell it you have four four gears and you do have to move around in each gear so it can figure it out it may seem a little uh, it's kind of a pain but really I mean I did this on the bike here in the shop you know the gearing and the programming in about two or three minutes so if you don't have a race stand yeah it's gonna be a little bit you know more tedious because you got to drive around you can do it in a parking lot you don't have to go very fast like I said you don't have to go about maybe two grand all you're doing is teaching it how fast your bike moves and how fast your RPMs are for each gear and then it learns everything else from there and then all the obviously you're telling it where you want it to have the shift light kick on so it really is straightforward um, it's it's simple to do and we'll help you through any of it if you're confused or whatever if you didn't uh, get a, had any questions or whatever you know just let us know um, but check it out on our website we get you taken care of hardracing.com